Okay, well, the ins and outs or the push and pulls of a button accordion. And um, Rob Willis and John Hartley have asked me to do this, so I'm not quite sure exactly what they want. But uh, the old Mezzan, which is the Rolls Royce, I, I thought I'd show it first because it actually does have the buttons um, on the keys, and that's where the button accordion takes its name from. The newer models, of course, don't have the, um, the buttons, but I'll come back to the mezzan a little bit later. Um, so there's two... From one point of view, I prefer the single row accordion for dance music because it's much lighter and they've got a full sound and they're quite easy to play. And there's two types. This is the German model, this is a Hohner, and uh, of course it's got four stops which will bring in um, an octave apart, reed banks an octave apart and the centre two in the middle range. Um, they give the tremolo and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Um, so this is the German model. The Nariel band used these a lot. Harry McQueen used to use it occasionally too. Um, you sit the accordion on your left knee. You've got to keep the bellows free. Uh, because if they rub, they're going to wear. Some people prefer to play them that way. And Harry used to sit them, sit the accordion that way, tilted forward, so that you wouldn't rub the bellows. Uh, I find that a bit awkward because it wobbles around all over the place, so I prefer the left knee. So, getting a hole in the pants, a lump of leather. Uh, some players prefer a um, shoulder strap. If you've got a shoulder strap you can do without the thumb strap which is good for quick playing and moving up and down but again for old time dance music I find that when I've got the accordion up there I'm a bit limited with room and I like to get a lot of bellows action going putting in the internal rhythm or the dance beat I get the bellows going to emphasize that beat and I've got the best leverage down here for doing that it's a little bit like comparing riding a bicycle with some of the modern ones that came in when the pedals were raised and your knees are up like this, you can't get enough leverage to ride up a hill that way. Uh, the accordion is tuned on a push-pull uh, system with the bellows and you've got a, um, valves inside that will close off the air on one reed and open it up on the other depending on the push or the pull. So you get two notes per button, like that. and the reason that uh, it's a very clever invention on the part of the Germans because it means that um, this push-pull system is tuned according to the chord of the key that the accordion's in. So this is a key of C. Now, it sounds a bit technical, but it just means that all of the push notes are either C, E or G. So it's in tune wherever you happen to hit. And that's why it's called accordion. It's basically the C chord, wherever you are. And conversely, the remaining notes are more or less on the pull, the G chord. And this means that without having to think about it, the bass on the left hand automatically works in, because you've got an umpa. That's the C bass note. And then you've got the upper C chord. So you get that umpa, and on the draw the G, G bass and G upper chord. And that, because with the push-pull system, it tunes in automatically with the notes on the right hand. Just to explain the tuning a little more, we'll have a look at the piano for a moment. That you probably have to come over the side somewhere, maybe. Well, you might might get it from there. Yeah. So, looking at the piano, if you sound the notes of the chord in the key of C, so we're talking about the white notes for key of C, and I'll just sound that chord. Each of those that I've pushed are the push notes on the accordion. 
the notes in between are the draw notes, but between the B and between the A and the C you've actually got two notes. All the others are only one, but here there's two, and that's why on the accordion when you run push, draw, push, draw, push, you've got draw, draw, push because of the two notes. If you didn't have it that way on the accordion you'd be sounding that, which is out of tune. So it has to be that. And conversely it's the left hand is just like playing a tune. You've got your bass note there and then your upper chord. So if you're playing a waltz come to a, a, one of the in-between notes, then it's the... So that's basically just comparing it with the piano and the white notes. And just briefly before I switch to the other model, <coughs> I explained all of these stops and we'll just use one button. That's an octave lower. That might seem the same, I'll come back to that. Octave lower again. So you, you're actually uh, a range of um, sort of two octaves, but it's three octaves apart. Uh, now, just coming back to the middle one. Very similar, but they're not quite the same. One's slightly out of tune. So when you put the two together, um, it's a term used in physics or science called beating. And you get that tremolo, that waver. It's caused by one row of notes being slightly out of tune with the other. And the modern um, accordions tend to use a lot of that. It makes it easier sometimes to sit in with an out of tune piano, or slightly out of tune piano, but um, you'll find the string players don't like them. So the older accordions like the Mesons have only got a little bit of that and um, for that reason they possibly might sound a bit better, particularly with other instruments. Uh, when you're playing in a dance you've usually got all stops up to try and get as much sound out as you can. So that's the German model. Now the same brand of accordion is the Vienna model. And uh, it was invented in Vienna by Damien, I think. The other one was invented by Bushman at Berlin. Um, I like these, they've got all the voices in there, so you're not using the stops. Although I suppose the stops give you a choice of a variance in tone. Um, but the Vienna model has the advantage that it has an extra row of buttons there in the bass which gives you the third chord, and that's the same push or pull. So if you get a tune like Merry Widow, playing the ordinary single row with only the two buttons so I don't use the other chords very much. Um, sometimes I, I haven't got the ear for it I suppose. Whereas Dave Barkler at Castle Main is a very very good accordion player and because he's a guitar player he knows all the chords and he'll put extra chords in. But um, this to me, the single row Vienna model I think is probably the best squeeze box for dance music. Um, but I seldom use it because half the time you've got to carry so many accordions around for different keys. So I tend to, to use the um, double row. And you've got extra chords on the double row, but you can stay on the... Generally, accordion players like to be on the inside row because that gives them the maximum number of um, possible chords. 
Um, so you on the inside row you've got your main bass note there. And your third one in there. And then you've got a minor up there. And if you're on the outside row, you would use the top two. There's one tune, and I would only have known this from music because Hank Monfroy pointed it out to me. If you're playing um, Alan Simmons' set tune, try and get the key so that you're on the outside row because you can actually get a minor chord. And you'll see me cross for it. but mainly you're on the inside row when you want the minor chord. Um, the, I play, um, people play accordions differently. I mentioned that push draw scale. When you do the next octave it's push and you've got to come down a button and draw. It's reversed to the first octave and it's all because of um, just matching up the pushes with the pulls, as I demonstrated on the piano. Um, you can play the scale in octaves, so that's four apart on the push, and five on the draw. Um, Harry McQueen used to do that a lot, the Nariel band do it a lot. I do it on some tunes, but because I'm a mouth organ player, um, I'll play the accordion like a mouth organ. So that on a mouth organ, I'll demonstrate that later, you're lifting your tongue off on the second beat, which gives um, a sort of a chordal um, chomp or, or rhythm to the tune. But I do it with my other fingers on the accordion. That but there's all other sorts of things that happen. Sometimes you're doing the octaves and you're doing other things in between. Whilst time is probably the easiest to play on the accordion and to get that umpa going. So we'll just redo the... Um, and I'll play Pazita more because that's one where I actually went to the trouble of learning some of the extra chords in the left hand. Shottish music, that's sort of a one, two, three, four rhythm, except I play it like I play an electronic organ. I think.
excited it would be. That's just sort of converting it from 4-4 four, four or shot each time into a 6-8 rhythm. Um, and that, there you have three main time signatures. If you were playing um, a three-hop polka, and you've got that three quaver beat that would come in. That. Mazurka is mazurka music, and um, it's only in the, the dance step that you get the polka step, and it's um, a bit bouncier than a waltz. So um, to try and demonstrate that, I'll take a waltz tune and try and play it as a mazurka. We'll come back to the springtime it brings on the shearing as a waltz. <laughs> to try and play that as a mazurka. It's just to try and emphasise the, the difference, but I wouldn't actually use that for a mazurka because uh, there are other tunes like Clementine. is another one that's sort of fairly different, it's in 3-4, but it's got lots of stops in it. Musically, that probably doesn't sound as good with that clip, but from the point of view of the dance, it's, it suits the, the step of the Vars of Vienna much differently. Uh, in New South Wales, there's some forms of Vars of Vienna that are, and they haven't got the mazurka step in the, in the second part, it's a little sliding step, and therefore they play it slower, and they use sustain. There's still no waltz vamp on those points, but they would use a hold. So just play the same tune again. <laughs> Six eight. Take the washerwoman. Um, many of the players played a very simple version of it. Single jig style. Um, whereas the written music. Squeeze box players use the bellows to play the tune for that, so that the notation isn't quite as in the written music, it's more this. 
You can't always get the second part all in, and Harry McQueen used to do this. So they're just some of all the, you know, the little differences uh, that you can get. Um, the mezzan, I want to come back to the mezzan a moment, just to get that nice sound. These are the Rolls Royce of the old accordions, and. I wish they were still making them. Um, Peter Hyde does a wonderful job with his um, Australian made accordions and he does use that drier sort of tuning. But they've got a sound of their own. Drums, that's what they had to do. Um, using some of that octave playing, the Spanish waltz in the second part. finger note on the accordion, you're getting out of the right hand corner of your mouth on the mouth organ, and you're actually covering the lower three holes with your tongue, and out of the corner of your mouth you're getting that one hole, when you lift your tongue off, you get a chordal lamp, like this. playing an accordion but like a mouth organ, that just that lifting the tongue off and on, it's, it's reverse of a foot tap. Um, I'm doing that with my other fingers on the accordion. Constant Screamer is basically the right hand of a, an accordion cut in half or bent over. So you've got your lower octave in the left hand and your upper octave in the right hand. and. Uh, I'll do this on the G row. So your scale starts on the left hand. Push draw, same as the accordion. All fingers on, you're getting the chord. They only have a single reed, so you've got a, you haven't got that accordion tremolo. Um, you've got a very pleasant sound. The very good players can cross row to get chords. I don't do that. I play my concertina like a mouth organ. And in the left hand, the several things. We'll come back to the simple tune. Springtime it brings on the shearing. Or I can use 
use arpeggios. tune in both hands octave apart. What I do is a combination of all three. And I do it automatically without thinking about it. it. Took me two or three years before I did anything but So what I do is this. When I've got the tune further up in the right hand, like the accordion and the mouth organ, Same as with the accordion, I'm using bellows punch to get that rhythm all the time. Or is a shot each? everything in every um, different dance rhythm to the one tune, but I won't. Um, I didn't mention tangoette, that's the uh, other very different rhythm. Um, rowing, um, very little. I find that for dance music you have to cut the tune down to the very simple basics so that you can maintain that punch with the bellows to get the dance or the rhythm and then you put your own ornamentations or embellishments in automatically but if you're trying to follow off music and putting the embellishments in off the music it doesn't always work turning your accordion inside out trying to play the tune. So I don't really believe in a lot of the cross rowing, um, except perhaps for the Queensland style, I'm a great admirer of, of that. Um, but people that play in the Celtic style, um, it's fine for Celtic music, but for old time dance music you need that left hand bass, it's your metronome, or your drum beat, your bass drum beat, that helps with the time, helps you keep it together. If you're leaving it out, you, you your timing can vary slightly if you're just relying on the right hand. You really do need that uh, left hand in. And the only time I would cross row, I'm on the wrong accordion, I should be on the Wiriki, but I'll work it out. Is Harry McQueen had a Valletta waltz. His grandfather played on concertina, and he could get the half note by crossing, so Harry had to work that out.
third part, you could cross the road to, well, on the concertina you can, but um, I just use the timing to clip the notes so you don't know that I'm not playing the half note. special accordion here which I should mention briefly because my mentor was Harry McQueen and he was never happy unless he caught you out on not so knowing something and he'd play a whole medley of tunes until he found one that he didn't know. This is live in front of a crowd of people dancing mind you. Um, and one of his favourites was the anniversary song which he had to play on a piano accordion and uh, I found this accordion in the antique market from Bendigo and it's CC sharp. And I had Peter Hyde put some minor chords and an E7 in there just so I could play the anniversary song. Now I haven't practiced this so I'll probably mess it up. my chance and I got Harry McQueen in the kangaroo pub at Malden and I played it and the old bugger never batted an eye did, he never said anything. He's up there now smoking his pipe looking down and still not saying anything. Thanks Don.